وعلى رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم عبد الرحمن بن اوف رضي الله عنه reported the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم said Abu Bakr is in paradise Umar is in paradise Uthman is in paradise Ali is in paradise Talha is in paradise Al Zubair is in paradise Abdul Rahman ibn Auf is in paradise. Saad is in paradise. Saeed is in paradise. Abu Obeda ibn Al Jarrah is in paradise. So, this is the famous hadith that many of us know the 10 promised paradise. Could you imagine? Could you imagine walking on earth knowing that the Prophet Muhammad has promised you paradise? You're alive, walking, going to work, doing your daily activities, and the Prophet has already said, you're going to Jannah. Guaranteed. What an honor. What a distinct honor. So it is very crucial that we study the lives of these great men. We need to study their lives and try to understand what did they do to earn this honor? How did they live their life? And how can we follow in their footsteps? How can we follow in their footsteps? And when you study their life, brothers and sisters, you will find two startling facts. They were the same, yet they were different. They were the same, yet they were different. They were the same because they la ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. They established the five pillars of the religion and they followed the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. But then they were different. They were different because they had their unique personalities. They were different because they had different strengths. They had different skill sets. They were not the same when it came to that. But they work together, they use their diversity of skill set, and they work together to contribute to Islam. For example, Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu. So many virtues for Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu. You know, about one of, you know one of the biggest blessings Allah gave him? He was the first Muslim man. Think about that. He was the first Muslim man. After the Prophet Muhammad he was the, the next Muslim man. What an honor. What do you think he did with that? Do you think he just sat down, okay, Islam is brand new. We have Khatija radiallahu anha, Prophet I'm going to sit here and do nothing? No. He, he discovered what he did was, and all these great men did, is they identified their skill set and they used them in a way to please Allah. Abu Bakr Siddiq was the first Muslim man and one of the things he did was he was out there giving da'wah. Early in Islam, he was out there supporting the Prophet Muhammad wasallam and giving him da'wah when nobody was doing it. Other than Khatija radiallahu anha. Nobody was. Abu Bakr Siddiq stepped up. In fact, many of the first, many of the ten promised paradise, they took shahada from Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu. Meaning, these ten, most of them who took shahada, they, Abu Bakr will get the reward from that. This is going to come back to Abu Bakr Siddiq. Umar bin Khattab radiallahu anhu, another man on this list. You know one of the biggest blessings he had? Gift from Allah. He was very, he was extremely physically imposing. Meaning, he was very big and strong. Very big and strong. In fact, he was so big that when he would sit on a horse, his feet would hit the ground. Picture that for a second. You are so big that your, your feet hit the ground when you sit on a horse. What do you think he did with that strength? What do you think he did? He used to protect the Muslims. He used to protect the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu Nobody messed with Muhammad sallallahu when Umar bin Khattab radiallahu anhu was around. He was the bodyguard for the Muslims. Nobody wanted to mess with him. Nobody messed with the Muslims. Once Hamza and Umar bin Khattab took Shahada, the Muslims had honor. More honor than they had before. Abdul Rahman ibn Awf radiallahu anhu, another man on this, another great man on this list. He had a very unique skill set. He was a very astute businessman. 
Don't, it's not something we all want. He was a great entrepreneur. The Prophet Muhammad ﷺ said about Abdurrahman ibn Awf, wherever he digs, he will find their gold. Imagine if the Prophet said that about you. Wherever you dig, you'll find gold. In other words, he was an extremely sharp entrepreneur. He was very wealthy in Mecca. And then he left everything for the sake of Allah to make hijrah. Imagine leaving all your wealth behind. He left everything. He left, with, he left everything and he went to make hijrah to Medina with the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu And he went and he went, stayed with the Ansari brother. And the Ansari brother said, I'll give you half of what I have. And he said, no, no thank you. Show me where the marketplace is. And Abdurrahman ibn Nauf, he went to the marketplace and slowly but surely, he started to build his wealth back up. Slowly but surely, he started to build his wealth back up. After a few years, he was so wealthy in Medina that Aisha radiallahu anha said about him that everyone in Medina owes Abdurrahman either a debt or a dua. You know why? Because all of the business that he, he was good at, all the skill sets, the, uh, the business that he did, he used it to please Allah. This Allah blessed him to be a great businessman. He made money and he gave charity. Zu, um, Zubair ibn Awam radiallahu anhu, another man on this list. When the Prophet Muhammad um, became a prophet, Zubair was a very young man. He's the same age around as Ali radiallahu anhu. So he's very young. Early in the, in the period of life, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he, was, he, he would sometimes get harassed, right? One time, Zubair heard that he was getting harassed. Zubair ibn Awam, radiallahu anhu, heard that the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was getting harassed. So he ran, he ran from his, wherever he was, to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he said, oh Rasulullah, I heard there were some people messing with you. I heard people were messing with you. And Rasulullah Sallallahu looks at Zubair and he says, Zubair is a 12, 13 year old boy. He says, oh Zubair, even if some, first of all, nobody was messing with me, but even if somebody was messing with me, oh Zubair, what would you do? You're a 12, 13 year old boy. What, do you, what would you do? He took out his sword and he said, this is what I would have done. The first sword ever unsheathed to protect the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam for the sake of Allah was by a 13 year old boy. He, uh, the gift Allah gave him was he was very courageous. Imagine that, it's a 12, 13 year old boy. He was extremely courageous. And he fought, and years later, he fought in the Battle of Badr very courageously. But Allah gave him the skill set of being courageous and he used it in a way to please Allah. What these great men have in common is La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. But then, whatever Allah gave them, they used it in a way to please Allah. Whatever skill set they had, whether it was strength, courage, money, it didn't matter. They identified their skill sets and say, Allah, you gave me this blessing, I'm going to use it in a way that pleases you. Another companion I want to quickly bring up. He is not part of this list, let me be very clear, but he is a companion. May Allah be pleased with him. His name was Hassan ibn Thabit. And the reason I bring him up is because he had a very unique skill set. He was a poet. He was really good at writing poetry. What did you think he did? You think he sat at home and just wrote poetry? He used to go and defend the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam by using his poetry. He used to defend the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam by using poetry. So again, a very unique skill set, but he found a way to use it to please Allah. Why am I bringing up this hadith? Because tonight is the 29th night of Ramadan. And we only have two more days left. Tomorrow and Monday, right? Or Monday and Tuesday. We have been worshipping Allah for 30 straight days, month of Ramadan, Qiyam, Quran, Sadaqah. In these last few moments of Ramadan, ask yourself, how can you use the skill set Allah gave you to please Allah? Like these great men before us. How can you use the special skills Allah gave you to please Allah. That's it. You think about that. And it, tonight could be Lil Qadr, right? We don't really think about it, but it's a 29th night. So it could be Lil Qadr. Could you imagine making dua, oh Allah, use me and do not replace me for 83 years plus consecutively? More than that, actually. Consecutively making that dua, oh Allah, use me, do not replace me. 
Could you imagine making that dua tonight? If tonight is Lailatul Qadr? That is the goal. To follow the footsteps of these great men. Establish the Quran and Sunnah. Follow the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Establish the pillars. And then use your unique diversity to do something for Allah. Whatever it is. It could be something very simple. One time I was having a lunch with my cousin. And we were waiting for the food to come out. And I realized he was on his phone. And I realized, you know, I've known this guy for a very long time. And he's very, he's very social media savvy. He's very tech savvy. He's the kind of guy that has two phones. He's, he's into that stuff. And I said, you know what? You should reach out to the imam of the masjid, of your local masjid, and ask him, how can you use your social media skills to support the masjid? Or you should reach out to the a nonprofit organization and ask them, how can you use your social media skills, which you clearly like to do, in a way that pleases Allah? And he's like, yeah, actually, that's a good idea. The point I'm trying to make is, and I'll wrap up with this, in the last few moments, figure out, make dua to Allah to allow him to use you and not replace you. And try to determine, do a self-audit, a self-assessment on the skill sets you have and how you can use them in a way that pleases Allah. Um, before I wrap up, there is YM is doing a bake sale outside after Irikat uh, for fundraising, so please do support them. JazakAllah khair. JazakAllah khair, Brother Frost, for that excellent khatra. Uh, before we continue on, we would like to um, continue our recognition.